Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Today, I've got a short video for you on one-liners you can do with modern CSS. Now, the way I've got this structured is we'll have our HTML over on the left here, and then I'll switch to the CSS when I wanna show you something from there. Also on the CSS, I've gone ahead and grabbed the can I use statistics for uh, today, and this will only get better over time. All right, let's look at the first one here. I've got this section here with an outer container here and then an inner container. And all we're doing is positioning the inner container relative or absolute in relation to this outer container. So traditionally, this absolute positioned div, you'd have to give it a top, bottom, right, left. Well, that takes forever. And we can replace all of this with a simple line called inset. So I'll say inset, three rem. If I save it, everything looks the exact same. Just like the shorthand for margin or padding or something like that, you can declare both top and right and left and bottom. And you can even do all together. So like one rem, zero, I don't know, five, something like that. And you can see how it just interacts with it just like top, right, left, and bottom. All right, so that's the first one we're gonna look at, this one right here. The second one is this aspect ratio. Now you can see here, I've got this showing correctly in a 16 by nine aspect ratio. I've got a wrapper around the iframe, and then I've got this set to a width and height of 100%. Now, if I move over to the CSS, it doesn't look so pretty. <laughs> if I come over here, you can see I've got a bunch of kind of nasty, hacky stuff that people have done for years. I've got a padding bottom, position relative, then I've got this iframe here, uh, position absolute, top, left, 100% width, height, border, and this just looks like a mess because it is. Well, now we can replace basically all of this. I'm gonna take all this and all this. We can position it now, or replace it now with an aspect ratio property, just like that. If I save it, nothing changes. It looks the exact same. Now you can even set like a max width on this. And then if it gets smaller or bigger, it'll always stay the same. And this is all happening, replacing all that other code we had. Now, as you can see, especially with auto prefixing and stuff, this is almost at 90% usage right now today. And again, it's only gonna get better. All right, number three, I wanna show you, let's get rid of this first of all. I wanna show you this is selector. Now there's all kinds of times where you come in and you're wanting to apply multiple different things depending on the state of a button or something like that. Well, you can see in the CSS over here that I've got something very much like that here. I've got a link, visited, active, and this just starts to get really long. I've done the same thing down here with the hover, the focus, the focus visible. And if I come in here, I do get that a change of state, which is nice. Now, the only problem here is if something is misspelled here or, or doesn't work anymore, if I come over here, it actually breaks that entire thing altogether. So none of this will now work. And you can see how there's no shadow being taken off. Well, this is selector lets us kind of fix both of these things at the same time. So what I could do is come in here and let's just say is, and then I'm just gonna add all of these things directly in here. And then let's close off this parenthesis, and suddenly now you can see the exact same thing works here. And what's even better is if I misspell something like this, it doesn't break the entire thing. It still works for the ones that work. So the hover and the focus visible would still work just fine. I could replace the link visited active, all those the same way. And again, not only do I get the advantage of it not breaking if I misspell something or something isn't quite working, but in addition to that, it's a lot cleaner and easier to read. Now this one is very closely related to the next one, which is the where selector. It's not as well supported as the is selector, but it's getting there. And if I come back over here, I've got most of this code actually from the MDM docs. I just altered it a little bit, so I'll make sure to add a link in the description. But you can see here what we've got is an is styled section and a where styled section. Because really understanding where is helpful in relationship to the is selector. So if I come back over here, you can see that this section right here, this is selector. I'm using it just like I mentioned up above, where I'm saying if there's anything with a div that has a class of is styling or an aside with a class of is styling or a footer that has a link inside of that, make that link red. Same thing here with the where, except I'm making it orange. Now the difference is basically in specificity. With the is selector, the highest specificity in the list is what the entire selector gets. With the where selector, however, it actually has zero specificity. And this is where it becomes really helpful and important. If you want to override these anywhere else later on in your document, and you're using the is selector, well then you'd have to have something that has this specificity or higher. So that would mean you'd have to come in here and have something like a footer is styling. And now that will change that link to blue. The only problem with that is if you're starting to have to stack these up, sooner or later you're going to be using important and all other kinds of things to try to override your styles from before. Let me remove this, and if I save it here, you'll notice because I'm using the where selector here, it has a zero specificity. 
that means it's really easy to overwrite right here. Now, obviously, sometimes you don't want to be able to overwrite it, and other times you do want to be able to overwrite it. So grabbing either the is selector or the where selector can be really, really helpful. So one of the cool things you can do with the where selector is have basically global defaults that can be overwritten with any CSS whatsoever, no matter where it appears in the document. And in fact, you can see, even if I were to move this up above and this where selector comes afterwards, it still just gets overwritten because it has zero specificity. One of the neat frameworks that I'm actually doing a video on here next week explaining how to get up and started with it is called Open Props by Adam Argyle. And they use this uh, openprops.style. It uses the where selector all the time, all throughout. So it sets a bunch of global defaults. And then anytime you write anything in CSS, it will override those defaults. All right, we've got one final section and that is down here. Let's go ahead and just remove, let's see, this whole section. And this is called the clamp property. Now, I like using the clamp property and you may have seen it on my channel before, but you can see here what we're trying to do is basically have a dynamic font size. And the way you had to do this before is have a bunch of kind of nasty media queries in here where you're saying, hey, I want it to be really small and then it's gonna just jump up at each of these different sizes larger and larger. Well, no longer do you have to do all of this. Instead, you can use a clamp property, and that's what I've got set here. And you can see what it does is on smaller screen sizes, it's going to shrink down until it's like 1.5 rem. And then as you get bigger and bigger and bigger, it just dynamically adjusts until it locks in at whatever the highest value you give it. So what we're giving it here is a minimum value we want it to be, a maximum value we want it to be, and then basically the thing that's going to adjust it, the, the default it's trying to get to. So 10 view width, because it's a dynamic a unit here, it's adjusting with the size of the screen and I'm adding one rem to it just to make sure that it's readable. Now you're not limited to fonts here. You can use this for images, for cards, for anything that you're wanting to dynamically adjust. I hope you learned something new in these five one-liners with modern CSS. There are a bunch of other ones I could have added to this list. If you have a suggestion, just leave it in the comments below and let's learn these modern tricks together. Well, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.